He is Josh Donaldson of the New York Yankees. And of course, uh, he was an American League MVP in 2015 with the Blue Jays. Josh, thanks so much for joining Kevin and me today. We uh, we trust that you're that you're doing OK as we sort of celebrate and talk a little bit here about uh, Jose Bautista's career with the Blue Jays. Um, I think I'm right in saying that that group really you guys really did give off the vibe that you fully expected to win and take no prisoners in the process. Didn't you? Yeah. Hey guys, it's uh, good to hear your guys voice again and uh, be with you as well. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I think to how you, I, I got to hear your introductory uh, for this. And to me, that's probably like the biggest compliment that you could probably give off. And uh, the, I think you were dead right uh, on that. And, you know, before, um, you know, Russell and I came over, um, it was kind of, you know, the Blue Jays were a really good team, but just hadn't really posted uh, to the postseason yet in a while. And I felt like early on, Batista, myself, and at the beginning it was Jose Reyes and Edwin, and, uh, you know, then it turned over to, you know, like Kevin Pillar, Goins. And then Tulo gets traded over. David Price got traded over. I felt like we all uh, had those same type of expectations of not just ourselves, but of of our teammates. And, you know, that was ultimately the goal was, you know, winning ball games. And how can we do that? Um, and I felt like we were able to do that more times than we weren't. J.D., offensively, what did Jose do that maybe you were – I don't want to say in awe of, but you may have said, man, I wish I could do that. Well, I'll, I'll give you a pretty, uh, <clears throat> pretty crazy story of, of Bautista. And I remember the, the very first game I ever started catching was 2010. Most people don't remember this, but Bautista, that was the year I think he really broke out with the mm-hmm. Blue Jays. And I got called up and I want to say – like after the first month of the year. And I remember the scouting report was like, you know, don't throw him a lot of off speed for strikes and you can throw fastballs and, you know, then he comes back with a leg kick and he just absolutely starts crushing heaters and he starts hitting off speed. And uh, I remember a specific at bat, he, he got to like 0-2, and we threw him a fastball up, and he swung and missed. But he swung and missed, and the intent of the swing and everything that was there, I, you knew it. He didn't even, like, panic about it. It was just like, all right, like, yeah, I swung in a bad pitch. Next thing be, I'm going to get him. And I felt that as, like, a catcher. Oh, sorry, my daughter's uh, talking right now. Um, but at the end of the day, Jose Bautista, what stands out to me the most is the fierce competitor that he was on and off the field. You know, a lot of guys don't get to see the bumps and bruises that go throughout the year. And Batista was just one of those guys who, who you could count on and not just uh, count on, but he was going to post and, and give you everything he had that day. And probably the second most memorable thing uh, is that if somebody was even remotely messing around with throwing at the guy, he was – Probably not just going to go deep, but he's going to go deep that at bat if they miss. And if they hit him, then he was probably going deep the next at bat. So there were definitely times when maybe Jose was scuffling a little bit. Where as a team, we were like, please just hit him. Like, try to act like you're going to hit him or something to get him going. <laughs> and it was, it's really probably the most impressive thing I've ever seen. Because, uh, you know, like when you get a hit or ball come in, you know, sometimes you, you might think or get a little uncomfortable, but it actually settled him in. You know, he, when he started to hit home runs, it was like the Blue Jays were this team that nobody really had many expectations of. I mean, he was he was a he was an all star player, a great player on an OK team. But it wasn't a team that people necessarily thought had a shot at going to the postseason all the time. By the time you got there and Russell got there, things had started to develop where not only was Jose a great individual player, but now he's surrounded by other great individual players. And oh, by the way, now the team is expected to do well. Did he change it all, Josh? Did you notice 
uh, as it kind of went away from, you know, Jose Bautista and the Blue Jays to the Blue Jays with Jose Bautista? Yeah, you know, I mean, I think that's a great question. I mean, you probably have to ask him that. I wasn't there early on, mm-hmm. but I would say probably like when I first got there, I, I don't know if the expectations of were like winning a division per se. Um, and, you know, when Russell, myself, came in, and I think Jose Bautista is an absolutely phenomenal player, and he does have the expectation to win. Uh, that's why he is an exceptional ball player. But I just think probably the, the culture at that time, it was a little bit different. Um, and I think that's what Russell, myself, Jose, Jose Rand, we all kind of uh, get everybody early on bought into this, hey, let's go out there and not just hope to win, but let's go up there with the mentality of expecting to win. And uh, we we felt like we had the team to do that. And we were right around the 500 mark there in uh, 2015. And then, you know, Alex AA made a couple big, big time moves at the all-star break. And, you know, I've, I've said this probably a couple of times in interviews now, but I, I remember in 2015 walking in the clubhouse after getting David Price and Tulo, Latoya Hawkins, uh, Mark Lowe, Ben Revere, all these guys. I just remember looking around the already pretty, um, you know, there's some pretty big names in that clubhouse already. I just, I had chills the first day walking in. And from that day on, you know, the Rogers Center was pretty much sold out every night. And, you know, I think Jose Bautista was really that guy that, uh, you know, you think of those, those postseason runs and the home run that he hit against the Rangers. And, you know, I can take a many big at bats um, uh, from him throughout the, throughout the course of his career. And, uh, you know, I, I felt like we all have one mindset and Jose Bautista was, you know, he was the man before that team got there. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I remember watching video of him, you know, trying to study his swing and trying to, you know, figure out stuff for my own self. Um, so Batista was uh, a guy who I highly looked up to going into even playing in, in Toronto. And then when I got to be his teammate, it was, you know, it was pretty cool to be around that every day and see him. What was the... St- what was the secret to having all those alphas together in one clubhouse and not having guys kill each Great other? Question. <laughs> I mean, I think if you look around baseball in and of itself, uh, you know, there are a lot of alphas in that room. It's just kind of what people kind of portray, give off uh, the appearance of a, if they're an alpha or not. I mean, and, but in general, most of those guys that have gotten to the big leagues were probably alphas at some point. Um, and I mean, I play with Aaron Judge, and there's not a probably nicer human being on the planet. But when he's on the field, like he's he's in a he's in a killer mindset as well. Uh, he gives it off a little bit different. I think where we were a little bit different is you know we weren't <laughs> we kind of wear our emotions on our sleeve at times, and that was for the better of our team. And sometimes it probably wasn't for the best of our team. But at the end of the day, we all were together, and I think that's how. We all we all bought in. We all had the same mindset of, you know, we we were trying to win a World Series, and we felt like we had the team to do that. And I think when you get around the league and you know, you 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 get on teams, and sometimes uh, you know the talk is about in spring training. Hey, we feel like we got a postseason team. Our goal is to win the World Series. But at the end of the day, like if the guys don't believe in a whole as a whole, don't believe that. And the leaders on your team don't believe that. then your team's not going to go very far. And I think that's just something um, that resonated with all of us. JD, you, you and Jose are sort of similar when it comes to you, you two sort of turned yourself into being great hitters. I, I'm, I'm intrigued about the process. Like how does the process start? Is it, you try and find somebody like you mentioned that's similar to you that like you maybe want to start a leg kick. How does he do that? Is there parts to it? Mm-hmm. You know, when do I start it? Like all those things. What yeah. is the, how does the process start? Uh, so that's a great question. First off. And I mean, for me, I don't, I, Jose, you have to ask him. Uh, I think everybody kind of gets there a little bit differently. Uh, and it's really, trying to find something that resonates. And for me, I, I started watching 
you know, the, the first guy that I was watching was Batista. I felt like we were pretty similar uh, athletic builds. It probably had you know, very similar athletes. And, um, you know, I liked the leg kick. I had it when I was younger, but going through the minor leagues in college, they kind of took it away from me. And, uh, but then I also watched Miggy, who's all, you know, probably one of the greatest right handed uh, hitters of our generation. I don't know if that's, you know, making much of that's probably not too bold of a statement. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, then I, and then the third guy I was watching was Alan Craig. He was like, he wasn't hitting for a lot of power at the time, but he was driving in a lot of runs. And I just tried to, there were three pretty uniquely different guys. And I just tried to start breaking them down differently and seeing what they had in common. And then trying to, you know, the one thing to me that makes Batista really special and kind of really one of the outliers is that he was a Deadpool guy that, you know, had a lot of success. And, you know, for me, I was, I could never really have that mindset of being a, a big time pool guy and feel like I could hit where H- Jose could, you know, he was on top of the plate and uh, his body worked extremely well and he had extremely fast hands and uh, a great approach and, and didn't really go outside the strike zone very often. Uh, so I felt like I couldn't really mimic him to the T because that's not where I felt where I was my best. Uh, so then uh, you know, I started incorporating some Miguel Cabrera moves that I was finding and uh, trying to use the, the whole field more and Alan Craig and just, he was completely different. And just, uh, I felt like that was a little bit more simpler form and to see what those three guys had in common. And I really just, uh, you know, try to make it my own. Yeah, that's a great answer. Uh, we had Jose on a couple of days ago, and I asked him about the elevated fastball, and you're the perfect guy to ask this. If, mm-hmm. if, if you were teaching a young person, because now, as you well know, they like to throw the elevated mm-hmm. fastball, and they do it with, high, with, with big-time velocity. And I, I used to be a left-handed hitter. I had a little natural uppercut in my swing. It would have gave me fits. Like, I, I'm just not real sure. I've often thought sitting on a couch – how would I do it? How would I lay off of it? How would I pull it foul? How would I get them off it? And you're a great hitter. How, how do you how do you attack that pitch? How do you attack that location now that they throw it so hard? Yeah, I mean that is uh, that is it's a very it's the hardest pitch to hit because you have the least amount of time to get there, and you're fighting against gravity uh, with the barrel wanting to get below the baseball. Um, you know, so at, at the end of the day, for me, in 2013, I had a really good year. Uh, that year, that was the only year that I hit over 300. But, you know, my power numbers, um, I think I had like 24 or something like that in Oakland. But if you'd have told me a pitch above the belt was coming, I had a really difficult time of hitting it or even really seeing it. Um, so that off season, I went and made some mecha- uh, mechanical adjustments to be able to hit that pitch. Um and for me, it's the thing that resonated with me for that is I think of everybody talks about keeping the front shoulder in, which is, you know, it's correct. Uh, the shoulder is going to come off at some point. It's about when that, you know, the timing of hitting is when is that coming off um, and being able to use your front side as more of, to me, it's more of that's where the scope, if, if we were, you know, having our, our scopes of a gun down the uh, target, we don't want that scope to be moving. And, you know, for me, it's being able to get the lead arm up to be able to get it above the plane of the baseball to where actually the barrel works on plane. Uh, so that's where, like, when I was coming up, people always say, hey, hit on top of the baseball or hit on top of it. Well, when I try to hit on top of the baseball, I was taking my hands and like a hammer and trying to hit on, on top of it. And I was hitting a lot of ground balls and, you know, missing a lot of pitches that I could hit and have weak pop-ups. And um, so I try to, to make that um, adjustment and being able to turn the barrel from behind your shoulder is also going to help with getting on plane and being able to not drop that. But in today's game where it, it's tough, uh, you know, you have guys with multiple fastball sinkers, four seamers, and, you know, really uh, the approach has to get so much more um, – Precise, uh, per se, and to where, you know, it's not just, hey, look fastball. It's like, hey, am I looking four seam? If I, am I looking sinker? And then when you get in the disadvantage counts, 
really being able to put yourself in a position to make adjustments to manipulate the barrel. And, um, you know, that's what I think the best hitters do okay. in, in the game. Yeah, that's right. That's a great answer. So tell me this, like, like the Jays lineup, they, they don't like it. <laughs> they, they know like you, the elevated fast, but I think the league average is somewhere right around 220. They're hitting like 213. They don't like it. Is it one of those mm -hmm. things that all the – stuff you were just talking about seems like that's a process like i would have to start it and it's going to take a little while for you to master that and be able to hit that thing consistently hard that's something you can do in season yeah definitely think there's some stuff that you could probably do in season for it uh it just depends on the open-mindedness of whoever is doing it um but you know Really, you know, I remember for myself, I, I used to talk to Batista in spring training. We would hit, and I, I still remember this conversation like it was yesterday. I was like, hey, man, I'm like, you absolutely destroy the sinker, right-handed sinker running in on your hands, and you pull it. I don't understand, like, how you do it. The only way I've ever really had success with that is, like, hitting it to right center, like trying to stay inside of it and shooting it the other way. And he goes – if Jose was extremely aware of his body and he'd be like, all right, so whenever you get your foot down, like the lead leg gets down, if you want to feel like you're hitting to the inside of that front leg versus where I would try to get there, I'd get to the position I wanted to, and I would let the front leg spin out. Right. And sure enough, we had a spring training game and it was against uh, Minnesota, I think. And actually I know, uh, but, uh, I think it was Nolasco that was pitching, and I had about a 10 pitch at bat, and he kept throwing me sinkers. I kept fouling them off, and I'm like, all right, Batista told me this. Try this. It was spring training, so there wasn't really anything on the line. I'm like, all right, I'm going to take that. And he threw me a 3 2 sinker in, and I clipped it like left center way back, and I'm like, holy crap. Like, I, wouldn't have, I wouldn't have figured that out by myself. Like, it took one of my teammates who, you know, fortunately, you know, today we're talking about Jose Bautista and just having that one conversation, like, it resonated with me. Josh, uh, very oh. quick, very quickly before you let you run, uh, how you doing? And, uh, you know, what is the, what does the future hold for you right now? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I had a, I had a, a calf strain right after the all-star break. And I'm sure you guys are probably surprised about that. Um but <laughs> at the end of the day, uh, I had a like a grade two plus calf, and they, uh, I'm actually moving around really well right now, pretty close to full speed. But at the moment, I'm on the 60 day, and uh, I'm not eligible to get back till the 14th. So, you know, right now I'm just trying to um, just continue honing the craft and staying in shape and and doing the best that I can right now. I'm trying to stay uh, have a have a good positive mindset yeah josh listen man we really oh. appreciate you uh, joining us today and uh get back get get better soon and get back on the field yeah. love to see you there that's All great right. stuff thank you hey i appreciate you having me and uh, like i said like jose bautista phenomenal player he do, he deserves every second of this uh in my mind is you know up there definitely with you know, the Toronto greats of, of all, all time and, you know, not a better person to be able to, to receive this award today. And, you know, he's a great teammate to me and I'm sure a lot of other guys. And, you know, I, I really enjoyed playing uh, the game with him. And uh, like I said, pr I appreciate you guys having me and it was fun to talk some baseball. Awesome. Take care. Be well, JD. See ya.